Since we all seem to know what's going on in this classroom. Oh, yeah, I went there on video. It's okay. All right. When this says determine if it's linear, what does linear mean? It doesn't mean line. Well, yes, it does. All right, kind of. It makes a straight line, right? But how do you know in a table it makes a straight line? Bless you. It's coefficients. It has some, but what's the other word we use for coefficient? Not very, what, coefficient or the slope, we also call it, Delta Y divided by Delta X. When we have a table, Delta Y by, divided by Delta X has to be the same the first time we do it to be linear. So when I look at this table over here on the left and I do Delta Y, the change in Y, Y2 minus Y1, that means take the bottom number minus the top, okay? And when you do that, you get plus 6. Now the next time, 8 minus negative 1 plus 9 8 or 11 minus 8 is 3. Some people will tell me that it's not linear because of that right there. I can't stop there. You have to do delta x. You have to do the change in x. Plus 2, plus 3, plus 1. Then you have to divide the numbers. <clears throat> 6 divided by 2 is 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 3 divided by 1 is 3. <clears throat> because all of these are the same, this data is linear. It will make a straight line. Okay, so if I look at this second one over here, delta y plus 2 plus 2 plus 1. Well, you have to check delta x. How do you get from negative 3 to 2? Plus 5 plus 1. Plus 1. Uh-oh. Houston, we got a problem. 2 divided by 5. That reduces. Uh, what is that? I think that's 0.4. 2 divided by 1 is 2. That doesn't work. And what we're going to... So this doesn't work. And one of the things is, see how this is not a 1 the whole way down right here? It's not the same. It's not even going to be able to be quadratic. So in this case, it would be... It's neither. It's none. It's not, not linear. So what we talked about, too, was... Let me go find my right, the one I want. Oh, there it is. All right. If I look at this table, and I go to do delta y, stay with me, minus 5, minus 3, minus 1, now it goes to plus 1, plus 3, plus 5, delta x, plus 1, plus 1. If I go all the way down here, it's all going to be plus 1, right? Well, I see it's not linear because negative 5 divided by 1 is negative 5. Negative 3 divided by 1 is negative 3. But if you go to do the second delta, Plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. It does not always have to be 2, but if the second, if the second delta y is the same, then it is quadratic. It means that it will be an equation to the second power. Now, you will not try it, you will not generate those until geometry, okay? Now, let's look at, let's look at this right here that you guys should have as your class set. It says put y, in Y1, put X squared in there. So, everybody should have their calculator. Let me pull up my handy dandy calculator. I'm also going to show you how to darken your screen so that you can always compare it to the parent function, to y equals x squared. 
All right, let's make mine bigger. Let's see here. All right, clear your memory. Make sure you start from the beginning. Second plus sign 712. Okay? Now, we go to y equals, and I told you to put x squared in there. So you have to press x and then the squared button to get x squared. Take the arrow key and go all the way to the left until you are blinking. See this far left thing blinking? Press enter one time. It's going to give you a darkened line. See, now when we press graph, we'll be able to know which parabola is my parent function because it's going to give me a darkened parabola. So what they want us to do is go to y2 and put x squared plus 5 in there. x squared plus 5. Now press graph. What did it do to this parabola? What do you mean shorter? Well, let's let's start with this. What is the vertex right now of the new one? The vertex of the new one is up here at 0, 05. All right, writing with the mouse. Here we go. Okay, so as I look at this, I see the vertex is 0, 05. What is the axis of symmetry? The axis of symmetry goes through the vertex. It is x equals whatever the x number is of the vertex. So it should be x equals 0. Then when it asks you, what name two sets of symmetric points? When you go second graph, and I look in the table, I'm going to go back up so I have negatives and positives. I like to go to where I can find my vertex in the middle. CNY2, it has 0, 5. I can find my vertex by my graph because, look, I got 14, 14, 9, 9, 6, 6. How do we know when something is a symmetric pair? Because they have the same what? What numbers are the same in a symmetric pair? The Ys. Okay? So when I'm looking here, I've got in my new one, I've got negative 3. 14 and 314. Another set that you could have negative 29 and 29. Another set negative 16 and 16. I want to point out again. The only reason these x numbers are one's positive, one's negative, is because your axis of symmetry is x equals 0. That is not always going to be the true of symmetric points. Symmetric points have the same y numbers. Now, let's look at, uh, I think I need to pull up this other screen because we're going to have some uh, misconceptions. All right. I think this will be the, no, that's probably not it. That's the same one I have open. So let me see. It's going to tell me. When you look at this, though, when you're trying to figure this out, maybe, it asks you, how is the parabola the same as y equals x squared? When you first look at, where's my calculator? When you first look at this, what do you think is the same? Okay, they both make what? What kind of graphs do they make? They both make parabolas, right? Okay, so one of the things I know that is the same. Holy moly, let's go right here. All right. First thing I know what they make the same is that they, they both are parabolas. They mo both make those curves. What else is the same between these two? They have the same what? Don't they have the same AOS? The axis of symmetry 
They have the same AOS because both of those parabolas can be um, folded in half on the y-axis where x equals 0. There is something else, but I think you guys are going to have a hard time seeing it until I show you this. And I got to see. <coughs> All right. So where's my little mouse? There it goes. Look at this. The red right now is my parent function, okay? My new equation, I moved it up to where my vertex is now at plus 5. Some people say it said it was shorter or it looked a little bit smaller or skinnier. But is that really what happened? All I did was do what? I moved the vertex up five units. Did it make it skinnier? If I move it back down, it's still the same width, right? The only thing that plus five did was shift it up. So right here when we're talking about how are they the same, you're going to find out later there's going to change a little bit, but they have the same width. What is different is their vertex. The vertex is shifted up. It is shifted up five units. What is causing it to shift up in the equation? That plus five. So let's go back and let's put in the next one. It says x squared. Oh, darn it. I didn't mean to do that. Keep x squared into y1. All right, in y2, we're going to have x squared minus 3. We're going to put that, different, that second one in there. And I'm going to press graph. There's my parent function. Now, what happened? Well, first off, let's, let's do this. What is the vertex of this new parabola? It should be 0, negative 3. If you look in the table and I press second graph, I know that I have 0, 0. Look in Y2, 6, 6, 1, 1, negative 2, negative 2. 0, negative 3 is the only one without a partner. So my vertex is 0, negative 3. The axis of symmetry is where you can fold that parabola in half, and it's the same on both sides. Remember, it's always x equals the x number of the vertex. So in this case, I have x equals 0. When you go back to look at the symmetric points, well, gee, here we go. You're looking for points that have the same y values. So I have negative 3, 6, and 3, 6. Let's see. So I've got negative 3, 6. Oh, darn. Negative 3, 6, and 3, 6. Looking again, I have negative, what is it? Negative 2 and 1, and 2 and 1. Negative 2, 1 and 2, 1. Remember, they're the same y values. I have negative 1, negative 2, and 1, negative 2. When they ask, how are they the same? When you look at your graph, darn it. When you look at your graph, they are both parabolas. They have the same AOS, which is x equals 0. And they have the same width, and we're gonna, I'm going to talk about that in just a second. So I'm going to write parabola, AOS, and width. How are they different? They're different by their vertex, but this time the vertex is shifted which way? Did I shift it up or down? I shifted it down three units. Look at these equations. Here's the 5, here's the 3. That's how these are being shifted right here. Okay, that plus or minus. We said that they have the same width, right? 
What number is in front of the x squared? The 1. See how they're both just x squared? You're going to find out in just a minute that that's what controls the width. The number in front of the x squared, the coefficient, is what's going to change my width. Shifting it up and down in my vertex is what's here at the end. All right, so if I go down here, it says, what happens to a parabola when C is less than 0? Okay, guys, the parent, the um, quadratic functions is Y equals X. Let's see. Let me write it like this. If you wrote it with a formula, it's Y equals AX squared minus C. This C right here, okay, or plus or minus C, whatever, this C right here, moves the parabola up or down, up or down. So if your C, if this last number is less than zero, that means you're going to have a minus some number. We're going to have X squared minus some number. When it, when it is less than zero, then you, it shifts the parabola down. When you have y equals x squared plus a number, that plus shifts the parabola up. That's what that last number does. Now, let's go and look at the back of that paper that you guys have. Okay, let me go back because I think some of you guys weren't done writing and I'll pause it. So now, when you look at this right here, let me pull this down. All right, let's go in our calculator right now. And this time, let's go to y equals. And in y2, let's put negative 4x squared. And let's press graph. There's the parent function. And there's your new, your new parabola. What is the vertex of this new parabola? This one down here. The vertex right here is the very, is it a maximum or a minimum? It's a maximum. This parabola, the new parabola opens downward. It's a maximum, but it is still 0, 0. What is the axis of symmetry? Remember, that's where you fold it in half right here. It's going to be x equals the x number of the vertex, so x equals 0. Now, when it says name two sets of symmetric points, if I go second, graph, and go into the table, Symmetric points are identified by the y numbers, right? So let's see, I have negative 1 and negative 4, and 1 and negative 4. Negative 1, negative 4, and 1 and negative 4. It said name two sets. I keep naming three, but we'll do this again. Let's see. Negative 2 and what is that, 16? Yeah. So I have negative 2 and 16. Oh, that's negative 16, isn't it? No? Yes. And 2 and negative 16. Let me double check. Yes. All right. Then it says, how are the parabolas the same? Really? Come on now. If I press graph and I look at this, what is the same out of these two parabolas? They do have the same vertex. What else? The same AOS. Are they both parabolas? Yep, so I have the same vertex, AOS. They're both quadratic, or they both make parabolas. How are they different? One is opening downward as one's opening upward, right? So one opens down 
and one up. What else? Is this the same width? No, this new one is skinnier. It's narrower. It's called a vertical stretch. Think about a marshmallow. If I pulled it, a, or if I pulled it and stretched it out, it would make it skinnier, right? So right here, let's talk about and let's just say what's different is the width. On the parent function, guys, if I look up here, what is the number in front of x squared? What number's right here, if there's not a number written? It's a 1. What number is right here? It's a negative 4, but it, let's just look at the 4. If the number is bigger than 1, it's going to make it narrower. The only thing the negative does is direction. The negative makes it open downward. Positive opens upward. If your coefficient is bigger than 1, then it is narrower. Or it is a stretch. Let's look at this next one. Let's go and put this one in the calculator. Go to y equals. OK, so I asked you to go into the calculator. And to go in here, and I'm going to put, well, let's see. We're going to go into the calculator and go to y equals. And I'm going to put 1 divide 8 x squared. Let's press graph. There's the parent function. Whoa, there's the new one. What happened? Did it make it narrower? It's wider. It made it, it, it um, is actually called a vertical compression. It made it wider. It's, think about a marshmallow. If you smoosh the marshmallow down, what happens to it? It gets wider, right? It gets flatter and wider out to the side. That's what the compression is. You compress, you push together the marshmallow. Now, what is the vertex of this new parabola? It's still 0, 0, isn't it? Guys, that vertex was only changed when we added or subtracted something over here. What is the axis of symmetry, the AOS? Can I fold this in half? Yes. It's still x equals 0. If you went in here to go and find, oops, let me get rid of my marker thing. All right. If you went in here to go find your symmetric points, how do you pick your symmetric points? They have the same, what number? X or Y, please. Same Y numbers. So I'm going to choose, well, I guess ugh, there's a bunch of decimals. Let's see, negative 2 and 0.5. So I've got negative 2 and 0.5 and 2 and 0.5. Um, 1 and... 0.125, so let's see, negative 1 and 0.125, and 1 and 0.125. All right, when you go to look at this graph, though, and we got to figure out how are they the same, what is the same in this? The vertex is the same. What else? AOS, and they're both parabolas. Vertex. AOS, and they're both parabolas. What is different? Oh, you know what? Do they both open the same way? Yeah, the direction is the same as well. And actually, you could have called this the direction when it says one opens upward and one opens down. Okay. But what is different? The what? The width. Now, when this number right here is a number between 
0 and 1, that's going to make it fatter. It's going to make it um, a compression. It's going to make it wider. I used to say that when it was a fraction, fraction started with F, fat started with F. But I have to be careful because if it was 7 over 8, that's bigger than 1. So, But if it's a fraction between 0 and 1, it makes it wider. Okay, so I'm going to skip down um, this one part. Let's see. I'm going to skip that five. Let's see. Do I have my questions in here? There it is. All right. What happens to your parabola when A is less than zero, when A is negative? Okay, so what it's saying is this. Basically, we have Y equals AX squared plus or minus C. We already talked about this C. This last part right here, Shifts your parabola, shifts um, parabola up or down. Now the A, when we're talking about, we're talking about the coefficient. What happened to my parabola when the A was negative? When it was, for example, Y equals negative X squared or negative 4X squared? It made the parabola do what? Open... It made it open downward. If you don't believe me, go in the calculator. Go to y equals. Put in there. Whoop, i got to move this up. Negative x squared. And press graph. It made the new parabola open downward. When that a is positive... For example, and you have y equals x squared, it opens upward. Now, when you talk about the width, you have to ignore the positive and negative. Positive and negative only deal, these two things only deal with direction. Positive and negative only has to do with if it opens up or down. If your parabola, if that a is greater than 1, y equals 5x squared, anything greater than 1, it's going to make it narrower. It's going to be a vertical, vertical stretch. If it is between 0 and 1, y equals 1 fifth x squared. That is going to make it wider, fatter. It is a vertical compression. If the parabola, if it is y equals, or a is 1, y equals x squared, it has the same width as the parent function, as the quadratic parent function.